bau you tak sedap, bau you basi, you can watch this show. Wow, bau lu basi. <laughs> <laughs> you can come and watch this show and all your questions will be answered. Okay, so come in, come in. We're going to start real soon our third episode of Life Quick Making. <laughs> Call all your family. This is a family friendly show. <laughs> you just, just get off Netflix, come and watch us. Hello everybody! Hello! Welcome back to Fried Chili's Kitchen. We are live and you are joining me, Hani Ahmad, on how to make kueh with... Lisa Khaled. And today, we are going to make bahulu. But before that, thank you very much for those who tuned in and watched us make som som. And as usual, the best comment of last week wins a little kueh som som making kit. So congratulations Nizam, this is coming your way. We've got some tepung beras, got some tepung jagung, got some santan, got some pandan and got some gula melaka. We're going to be making a lot of somso. You only need 30 grams of this so you can make a lot of somso, you can make gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so don't forget, uh, Vinny is behind the camera. Hello. Yeah, exactly. So if you have any comments and stuff, please um, type down below. DM us. And a baulu making kit could be coming your way. So, so Lisa, what are we making this week? Today we are making baulu, just in time for Chinese New Year. Hello. This cute flower shaped little kueh. Okay. I'm gonna eat one now. Okay. <laughs> hmm. That is hmm. golden brown on the outside, soft on the inside. Okay, you see, these are sold everywhere. So that is what a perfect baulu is, right, Lisa? It has is a little bit, it's a bit squishy, it's a bit squishy spongy, a light crust on hmm. the outside. Oh my god, it's so addictive. It smells very fragrant. Hmm. Okay, don't eat it. Let's, let's, let's I want to eat it. Okay. Okay. Let's get on with the program. Okay. Everybody's hungry now. Lisa, now, a lot of people, there have been a lot of questions mm -hmm. when people say that their baulu is too hard mm -hmm. or their baulu tak naik. Yep. What are the common mistakes for people making baulu? Uh, the common mistakes are either you beat your eggs too much, uh -huh. too fluffy, mm -hmm. which means it will collapse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which makes your baulu dense. If you do not beat your eggs enough, which means there's not enough air in your eggs, meaning when you bake it, your baulu is still dense. Oh man, so you really need to know the right consistency Before of getting your batter, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So the most important ingredient is eggs. Best to use fresh eggs. Yeah. When it's fresh, it will puff up nicely, faster. If your eggs are a bit weak, it's okay, you can use it, you just need a lot more time to it and make it I think the rule of thumb you told me is that it needs to be at least three times the volume uh -huh. of what you put in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's nice and pale colored like this. Say hello to our friends. Oh, hello, hello everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Right. So yep. we beat this earlier on because mm, yeah. this machine is a bit noisy and just in case you can't hear us. Okay. This is almost the consistency you need. So I want to switch this on. Okay. Yeah. So you want this, guys? It's nice and. S okay. What's in here is. Yeah. Eggs, sugar, and vanilla essence. Oh. Okay, I dumped all three in. I switched it on. This is uh, medium speed. Okay. So about five minutes or so of beating. Yeah, I would say or medium or speed. Uh, yeah. So mm. once it look, looks pale like this, I'm gonna give it a few more seconds just bear with me. In the meantime, honey is going to dry fry the dry fry the fluff. Why do we dry fry the fluff? Is to get rid of excess moisture. Making your baulu lighter and yeah, because remember guys, we actually live in Malaysia and Malaysia is humid. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people sometimes tak perasan that our flour has some a lot of moisture in it. So mm -hmm. this is the way for you to make your baulu nice and dry and fluffy. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even when you're making pastry, it, uh, my sister keeps her flour in the freezer actually, mm -hmm. so that it will not be uh, moist. Of course, those day, today we have a, a nice um, mixer. In the old days, they used to kocha, right? Oh. People who make baulu are also very good at making. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, your eggs, okay, it's supposed to look like this, okay, camera. Can you see? Okay. It doesn't just drip down like liquid or water. It has a, it can form like a light ribbon around it. Let's turn this off, alright? Hmm. Okay. Alright, let's see. The eggs, if I pick it up, and yeah. I can kind of draw on it, meaning you can still see the line of the thing. It's done. Okay, don't go over. Yeah, don't go overbeat. Yeah. Don't underbeat. Yeah, I'm 
I mean, I think as most quiz, um, you need to make it a few times, and then you kind of get a hang of it. Question, yes. Question. All right. Question. Just a recap. So, how do I make my bahulu last longer? Uh, um, oh, dry fly, dry, dry fly, dry fry, <laughs> dry fry your flour. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I Lisa's grandma used to gantung in a bakul, right? Yes, my huh. grandma never kept it in an airtight container like how we do today. She left it in a bakul, hanging on a ceiling, which... It has a lot of effort, that. Yeah. <laughs> the airflow keeps it dry, which means it lasts longer. Yeah. And growing up as a kid, I thought this was kuih bakul because it was in a bakul, hanging on a ceiling, but in actual fact, it's kuih baulu, and kuih bakul is... So Nyan 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 but Nyan Nyan I think she also did that so that you will not eat all her baulu. Yeah. It's too. I kept reaching for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So when you dry fry a flour, you don't want it to get brown, yeah, guys. So yeah. it's just you're until making, it's a little bit yeah. dry. You're not making gravy here. You're not browning the flour. So just to like give it a little jiggle, you can feel it feels slightly lighter as well. Mm, yeah. So right. on a medium heat, medium low heat. Actually. Yeah, maybe one to two minutes max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just want to just get rid of the extra moisture in yeah. it. So the eggs are ready, so All I right. am going to fold the flour. Okay, uh, this is also another important tip, guys, so please so, pay attention. Alright, I'm going to fold the flour. This flour has been sifted, by the way, so... Yeah, you want it to be fine. Alright, so you don't dump all of it in one go. Let's just say three batches. It's kind of like making a sponge cake, isn't it? Yes. Hmm. You know like when you make sponge cake, you also cannot work the flour too much? Because the gluten will come out. Yeah. So you want to... Fl Fold it lightly. So folding means you are not stirring it while beating out all the air that's in there. You just want to yeah. gently... Yeah, you want to keep the air. Yeah, mm. lovingly mix it in. Okay? Mm. So don't do it too much because you will make the, yeah. the egg mixture collapse again. Uh, do we know why it is called bahulu, Lisa? You have a quick story on that. Um, apparently, in the old days, when people used to travel up and down river in a sampai, the ingredients for a baulu is very easy to carry because they're all dry and then they carry eggs. So it's literally bawa ke hulu. So they bring their ingredients to hulu and then they can actually make the kuih for a snack and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Bawa ke hulu becomes baulu. This is a this is was given by a food historian, Naj. Hmm. Thank you, Naj, for that lovely story. Yeah. So this is the last bit of flour. Okay. okay. Uh, as usual, guys, don't forget to put your comments so that Vinny and us, we can answer all your pertinent questions on Bahulu. Uh -huh. yep. mm. This I... is the consistency. You can kind of draw a ribbon on the batter, mm -hmm. meaning, can you see that? It's not collapsing straight away. Yeah. A smooth surface so again. This will make your Bahulu fluffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's okay. about 10 minutes of feeding the egg. Uh, that is about five minutes of yeah. the egg and then just a quick folding of the flour. Yep. So when you fold it in, don't forget to scrape the bottom as well because flour is heavy and it will sink, yeah, it will to, sink the to the bottom. bottom. So just make sure you hmm. korek kat bawah tu. Fold in, scrape off the sides. Okay. Once I yep. once Can you make. stir it a few times and you don't see dry lumps of flour, you are good to go. Hmm. I am quite pleased with that. Hmm. So, let's. Right. Why don't I take here and show you the. Oh, I, no. Okay, the mole. Um, okay, this is another thing. This is, uh, I guess it's a kwechara mole, but people also have made baulu in this mole because our baulu mole is actually in the, the oven. oven. And it's very important to heat your moles. Yep. When you get a new one, uh, a tip is actually to season it by actually putting it on a stove top, right, Lisa? Put yep. a bit of oil, mm -hmm. let it heat up, let it season smoke it, up. smoke up, let it smoke up yeah. then wash it, and then it's, it's ready to be used. Yep. So, so yeah. tip to make sure how to hmm. make sure your kuih does not get stuck on the mold, your mold has to be hot. Okay. So when it's heated, you can heat it in the oven like how ours is in the oven right now, preheating. Or if you want to speed things up, just pop it on the stove. Oh yeah. Turn on the flame, oil it slightly, put the batter in, and then you can bake it. Hmm. Right. You find that actually um, a lot of the times how kuehs that uses molds like this uses the same technique. If you're making akok making kuih cara, mm -hmm. making apaham, uh, you know, uh, it's always, uh, serabai, it's always good to heat up your mold first and oil it. Yep. yep. Right, I'm going to put this aside first. Right. Yeah, or else honey, we'll eat some more. The <laughs> is ready. Okay. There you go. Right. This is hot. All right. 
Alright, this has been the oven for five minutes. And please put it on a tray because yes. I once just used the mold and then all the batter spilled inside my oven. Yeah, because it's wobbly, it's not a smooth uh, surface. Yeah. So just take a little bit of oil, yeah. not a lot. So we are here to make sure you don't make the same mistakes that we did. Yeah. So <laughs> because, yeah. Don't put a lot of oil, you're not making omelette, okay? Yeah, so just, just a little bit. Just a little bit, make sure you get through all... The... This is why you put it on a tray, because it spins like that. Yeah. Okay? You don't want it to spin all over the inside the oven. Yeah. Okay? And so... in fact, if you even have a tembaga mold, it's even better. Yes. So, so pretty much if your grandmother or your aunt have heirloom kitchen stuff, please keep them. Okay. Yeah, it is your pusaka, mm. it's your heritage. Alright, so <laughs> okay. most hot is oiled, alright, batter is ready, so you okay. want to fill it up. Okay, I'm trying not, not to make a mess here. No, oh, I should help you in this. Alright, so you don't want to put too much in one, like three quarters up yeah. will be great. three quarters. Alright, once you are used to this, you can make it a lot faster than mm. I am. And and uh, yeah, do buy more than one mola. Yeah. Then you will not, you will not be only making like how many is this? Seven. Seven at one go. Yeah, at one go. We have a question. All right. Hello, oh, uh, welcome. What if I don't have a mole? Oh. oh that's a good question. Uh, yeah. Actually, we have tried to make it in a toasty maker. Oh. Yes. Hmm. Do you know? Do you guys know what a toasty maker is? This. Everybody has one. In the kitchen, it's probably dusty because you don't use it much. Yeah. That's you know, you, I mean, I, and you can actually, um, uh, usually people use this to make cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but actually, a toasty maker is quite versatile. You want to put this back in the oven? Yeah, I want to heat that up for a bit. Okay. That's all. Once you put it in, mm. alright, go straight into the oven. For about 10 minutes, right, Lisa? About 10 minutes, yeah. But you just need to eyeball your oven from time to time mm -hmm. because you want it to get nice and golden brown then you can probably take it out. Okay. Temperature? Ah, it is 190 degrees for 10 minutes. 10 mm. minutes is just nice. 15 mm. minutes is a bit too crispy, too brown. Yeah. So when the top is like golden and nicely set and crusted, take it out. Okay everybody, PM us now and we will as usual give you a beautiful PDF copy of this recipe. Mm -hmm. If you want um, the ketayap in the sumsum -sum recipe from the previous two weeks, just PM as well and we can we can send it off to you. Yep. And don't forget to join our Facebook group, My Kueh Club, where you can actually watch this show again, and you can watch our previous shows as well as ask more questions and join us in our Kueh, in our sort of like mission in life to make Kueh cool and yes. delicious again. Yes. So, right, this is the toasty maker, all right? Nice and hot, okay. I've greased it a bit with yeah. oil. Okay. This is for those if you don't have a yeah. bowl but you have a dusty toasty maker lying in your kitchen. Okay. Yeah. So just put Actually for those who are viewing us overseas, I'm sure you have a toasty maker. Yeah. Right? When I was in uni, everybody had one. All the Asian students had a rice cooker and all the British students had a toasty maker. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I just burnt myself. Oh careful, careful. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly don't fill it up too much. So, and I know you guys probably are thinking, hmm, can I put cheese in this? Can I put chocolate chips? You know what? The world is your oyster. Yeah. Most importantly <laughs> is to learn how to make good. a good kueh bahulu first and then do whatever you want. All right. So just fill that up. And this also takes 10 minutes. Okay. It will set first, but I prefer it to be a bit more golden brown. Right. This is after 10 minutes. We made one earlier. Ta -da. Ta -da. Okay. It's texture is just like the bowl. It might not look so exciting, but, no, but it's it, pretty It's pretty decent. Yeah. Look at the inside. So this yeah. is a nice tip for those who don't have a mold, but yeah. if you're in Malaysia, go buy a mold. Nah, so, tak mahal pun. Ah, for hmm. 15 bucks, you can buy at the yeah. Karuncit. Hmm. The and we will be teaching you how to make kuih cara belauk next week, so mm. you can use the same mold. Yeah, exactly. Yay. Right. Okay, so I think, I think we're going to sign off now. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching us. Um, PM us as usual. PM, don't forget to PM us for a PDF copy. Uh, join our My Kueh Club Facebook group. And yeah. yeah. Next week, <laughs> sorry, Kueh Chara Belau. Yeah. You want to watch that because yeah. that's one of my favorite kueh, man. Yeah. Mm. Savory kueh are one of the best kueh to make. Yeah. Mm. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your baulu. If you make some, take a photo, share it with us, ask us the questions. Yeah. We'll try our best to give you our answers. Alright, thank you for watching guys. Bye! Bye! Bye.